Hi, my name is Rick Graziani, and I would just like to show you a, a brief tutorial on my uh, little Python code uh, that you can download. And the uh, instructions on where to download and how to get all that stuff will be in the notes of this video. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is just a little video I did to help you learn about IPv6, little Python program. I'm just going to go through this relatively quickly here. So the first option is just, you know, how do we represent an IPv6 address? So I'm going to choose that option here. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit so you can see all this. But uh, it just shows a little bit how we represent an IPv6 address and what the address looks like and the, the, the two rules for reducing the size of how we represent the address. So just a little quick brief information on that option there. Okay, number one through four is learning a little bit more about the addressing. So let me choose number one here, which will be compress an IPv6 address to its shortest form. So let's do that. So you can put in any form of the IPv6 complete form, meaning using all the hexadecimal digits, which is there's 32 of them. I'm just going to copy this, okay, and use that as an example. And here we have it in its longest form. I press enter, and it shows us the first the the two rules. First rule uh, about omitting any leading zeros in any 16-bit segment or hex tet. And then any the second rule about replacing any single continuous string or continuous string of one or more 16-bit hex tets using the double colon. So anyway, it shows you what the address that you typed in here. It shows you what it looks like if you omit just the leading zeros. And then if you also then replace any all zero hex tets. Okay. Uh, number two is kind of the reverse of that. <laughs> Display all 32 hexadecimal digits of an IPv6 address. So let's try that. <clears throat> so uh, let's go ahead and take, I don't know, this one here. So I'm just going to copy that. Of course, you can put in any address you want, but I'm just doing this to make it quick here. So you no notice that this one also already has... Uh, those two rules applied to reduce the size of the address or how we represent the size of the address. So I press enter. And anyway, it again gives a little explanation about the address, but here's the address that we entered. And here it is, the complete, also known as the preferred IPv6 address form, although nobody really prefers this. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's number two there. Number three display the IPv6 address type and address information. Okay, so once you start learning more about IPv6, and I'll talk about where you can do that in a moment, there's many different types of IPv6 address, different types of unicast addresses like link local, global unicast, uh, EULA addresses, there's different types of multicast addresses, solicited node, and other types. All right, so I'm just going to take this one right here. Let's just take this one, this here, find out what it is. I'm going to paste that in. What is that? Well, it is telling me that this is a link local address. There's the RFC. Here's the format of a link local address. This is what link local addresses are used for. And then with any of these addresses that you put in, it will tell you, can this be used as a source address? Yes. Can it be used as a destination address? In this case, yes. Is it fordable? <laughs> Will the router forward packets with this destination address? No, link local addresses are not forwardable by the router. Is it globally reachable? No, this is a link local address. Learn more about that and I'll show you where you can find out more if you're interested. Okay. Uh, and a little note here about link local, it's best to use the FE80. All right, so that was number three, display the address type. Let's look at number four, subnetting. Oh, one of the things I love about IPv6 is as a teacher, takes me oh, easily a week, could even take longer to talk about subnetting IPv4. 
IPv6, I can do it in five minutes. Makes life so much easier. Okay, let's take a look here. So what it's showing you here is we're gonna be subnetting what's known as a global unicast address. And what a tells you a little bit about a global unicast address here. But what I'm asking down here at the bottom is first just put in the global routing prefix. So this is how the, um, let's say the ISP has seen you. I won't go into that here. And the prefix link. So I'm just gonna steal this one here because it's probably the, the shortest here as far as the number of subnets. So let me paste that in. And so what I'm showing you here is this part here is actually the global routing prefix right here, first 56 bits. These last, so I'm gonna press enter here, and that's gonna ask me how many subnet bits. So I've actually chosen 56 bits for the global routing prefix. And these last two zeros here at the end here is actually gonna be my subnet ID, which is eight bits. Now it's always best, although you can use anything you want here for this, this exercise, uh, this option, but you know, typically we use and we want to leave 64 bits for the interface ID on most networks. So let me put an eight here, but I'm just going to show you the different subnets. And there we go. So there's actually 256 of them. I could scroll all whoops, scroll all the way up there. So everything going from I can get up there, there we go. Zero, zero in hex. And we just count in hex all the way. The FF, actually you have about 200, not about 256 of them from AA to FF. So easy in IPv6, the subnet. All right, uh, number five, let's see something. Let's display your IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. So let's do that. Number five, what do we got here? All right, so tells me a little bit about my local host information. I'm here at school at Cabrillo College where I teach, I also teach at UC Santa Cruz, but I'm here at Cabrillo. Uh, it's showing me my private IPv4 address. It's showing me my public IPv4 address, but what we're really interested in is my IPv6 addressing. Here's my link local address that you will at least have that shown when you use this option. But here at Cabrillo College, we are, using also IPv6, we are dual stack. And here is my global unicast address, IPv6. So it tells me a little bit about this, it tells me that I have an IPv6 link local yes address, yes. Is this uh, IPv6 local network access? Yes, means I can use it to access my local network. But I also have a global unicast address and it is, uh, I can use it to access the, the internet. And actually most of what I do on the internet, although I run IPv4 also, uh, most places like Google and Cabrillo and many other sites, Netflix and things like that are all via IPv6. All right, so that's uh, display your IPv4 and IPv6 addressing information. Enter a URL and get the IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Let's do that, number six. So a fun one I like to show you is I could use Google, Cabrillo, Netflix, get the IPv6 address. But what's kind of a fun one is Facebook. So let me type in Facebook. Okay, shows me the IPv4 address. And here we go. There's the IPv6 address. I like this one because the last 64 bits, at least these bits here, ah, Facebook. Aren't they clever? All right. Uh, last but not least, some fun facts. So if you want to just some random facts, I do F here. So first of all, it just tells me how many bits, how many, yeah, <laughs> does tell me how many bits are in an IPv6 address, but it tells me uh, equates to 340 undecillion addresses. And how much is that? Well, let's press enter. So anyway, it gives you a little fun facts and I've got a few of these in there so you can keep on trying. Uh, tells you about, you know, what, how much is 340 on decillion? Let's do one more. Hopefully my randomizes, there we go. Here we go. Another one for the randomization. All right, 
And if you do quit, it comes up and tells you where you can find more information. First of all, yes, I wrote a book on IPv6, so maybe you want to look at that. But I also have a YouTube channel uh, on IPv6. So actually, let me show you both of those. Um, so first of all, yeah, let me just bring this over. There's my YouTube playlist on IPv6, a lot of stuff there. Okay. The first video is a little long because I get into kind of the history of IPv6, but after that, they range anywhere from, oh, five to, well, 30 minutes max. And here's if you're interested in getting a book on IPv6. This is my second edition of this book. So uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And by the way, yes, download this Python program. All right. So you'll see all that uh, good stuff. Oops. All right. Uh, see all that stuff right here. That's what I want to show you. All right. So you can download this program and uh, enjoy. Have a great day and uh, hope you enjoy IPv6.